Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. Thank you all for joining me. As you can tell, I can't seem to quite figure out what color I want my hair to be. So I went in trying to go just a touch darker and ended up a lot darker. So I'm gonna go back and probably put blonde in it. I just keep changing my hair color all the time, which is good because I never used to do that. I had the same hair color for like 35 years, but making a couple changes. So life update, obviously still in the barn. We have been making the selections for our home building that we hope that we can break ground soon, hopefully in the next month. It's been a very, very much an easier process than I thought it was going to be. Everybody warned us um, when we were building, don't build, it's really hard, you're gonna run into problems. It's been a very easy process. And this company that we're using, who we will, we'll talk about them later and explain everything on the Smiths, they've been great. They want us to get everything done up front before they break ground, which is really smart. But I'm excited The you know, picking out flooring and tiles and cabinets and, and paint and lighting fixtures. It's It's been really exciting and I think our house is gonna be unique and I'm, I'm excited to, be able to move in in about a year hopefully chicken update as you guys know if you watch the Smiths we lost giggles who was one of our original original girls I don't know if she was sick from a bacterial infection and then the medicine on top of the Texas heat she just didn't make it we also had another chicken a brand new one of the new ones that we added to our flock it was a smaller one London went out there a couple days ago and all of her feathers were pecked off of her head and her head was was not not looking good so we didn't know if a predator had tried to grab her, got her, and then I've been told that chickens are attracted to red, so then they go attack, let me know if that's true. But when they found her, one of our other old girls was pecking at her and kind of bullying her and picking on her. So we have her separated and the other coop now, healing. I tried to bind her wounds and, and, and fix everything. I hope she's gonna be okay going back in with all the girls, but I know that happens sometimes. You know, they say the rule of the roost or, you know, the pecking order, that's true with chickens for sure. A lot of you guys asked about school. What are we doing for school for our kids? So we made the decision to switch schools actually, and we are gonna go private. And it was a big decision. We prayed a lot about it, but I think it's gonna be really, really great for them. And I think they're gonna get to go to chapel, have a, a, a Christian upbringing and, and get to have things like gardening and Spanish and stuff at their age, which is gonna be really cool. So they are excited. Our neighbors go to the same school, so they're excited to know people there. So I know a lot of are in our old district, I mean birds, in our old district, they were gonna do the distance learning for three weeks, and then I think you could choose to go all in or all out. I know it's so hard. It's just been such a crazy, I can't even believe we're living in, in the times that we're living in right now. But we will never forget it, will we? All right, so I guess I should start here and say, let's get started with our rise. All right, so today I thought I would start with some questions. I asked you guys to ask me questions on my Instagram last night, and I'm just gonna start with those. So I actually have a lot to talk about today, and I could probably split this up into two or three arises, but we're just gonna try to shove it all in there today. So first question, do you find new meaning in Granger's songs after River's departure? So for me, I don't know that, if it, I don't know that it's finding new meaning in those songs, but I'm definitely more emotional. I definitely have cried a lot more listening to this album as I have in albums of the past, even when they were emotional songs. I think I think just knowing what we've gone through and knowing the passion that he puts in and, and knowing a lot of these songs are about our family and our, and our family dynamic, I just get very, very emotional. You know, they're very personal for us. So yes, I, I cry. <laughs> cry a lot easier now um, with his music than I used to. And with any music, really. I'm just, I'm a much, I've always been an emotional person, but now I'm definitely cry a lot. <laughs> have you ever had doubts that there really is a God. So, a lot of you know, I, I grew up going to church. I, I've talked about this a million times. I grew up going to church, but I didn't know Jesus and God in my heart. And I was lost. I got lost for a long time there in my teens and early 20s. And and I did have questions. I did wonder, you know, is there a God? Is, is this real? Is, is all, you know, all this stuff that people talk about, is this real? Um, I actually dated an atheist one time, and he almost made me feel stupid 
and dumb for even believing in a God. And, and some atheists can make you feel that way. And, and they're very smart. He was a very smart, book smart individual. But just kind of, it was during that time where I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I was as a woman. I didn't uh, know my worth. And I, I was very easily persuaded. And I let, sorry, my dogs are running around. And I let other people's opinions sway me. And I think that's common for a lot of people. And um, so I went through I went through a period of, of really not knowing and really really being lost and, and truly not knowing what I believed. And I think I think Christianity is such a, a personal journey. And and until you truly find that relationship with God, you may have questions. And and that's natural. That we're we're humans. Where it's natural to have questions and and go through life, but and go through life questioning those things. Gypsy, go. Go. So it's something that you have to just take on. It's your own personal journey and you have to try to truly find what you believe and, and dig into the word, go to church, ask a lot of questions, ask somebody if you are, if you're not deep into your faith or you have a lot of questions about, about the Lord, learn, read, seek wise counsel, pray and talk to, talk to God and, and see if you feel, you know, anything in your heart. And so that was, that was quite a journey for me. And, but I can tell you, and I've said it before, once you I don't think I ever truly didn't believe, but I did have questions. And so when you finally feel that truth, I guess, in your heart and know, and you feel God's presence in your life, there's no turning back. It's not like now that I feel I have this much faith, even if something terrible happens in my life, I'm gonna be like, nope, there's not a God anymore. I just, it's just something that will always, always be in my heart. I'll always shout it now because I found it. I've been found and I know that my God loves me and he's for me and he never gave up on me. And I am so blessed to feel his presence in my life. And I hope if you have any questions or struggles that, that you feel that too, someday, eventually. Truly, what do you think the first 15 minutes of heaven will be like? Oh my gosh. So you see those pictures of the first 15 minutes of heaven and it's families hugging and, and, and all that. And truly, I don't know. I have no idea. But I, and you hear people say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to God about this. I'm going to ask God about this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. For me, I think that when, when I get to heaven, I think it's just going to be the most beautiful, unexplainable love and peace. And I'm not going to care about all the whys or what I thought I might have wanted to ask God before. So when you get to heaven, I don't think, I don't think it's going to matter. It's not gonna matter. You're gonna be in the most glorious place with your loved ones, with God and with Jesus, that none of the stuff that you thought you might wanna ask him about is gonna even matter. And I think that is what the first 15 minutes of heaven are gonna be like, just pure bliss and love and grace. And who knows, maybe even uh, for me, probably a lot of emotion, even though they say there's no crying in heaven, I would feel like I would be just so emotional and just falling at his feet and just, you know, worshiping worshiping and just being so grateful. So I think that might be what the first 15 minutes of heaven is like. What do you do when you feel distant from God? So there are times when, when you feel that God is a little more distant in your life. And, and there are times, you know, throughout my week that I might feel like, gosh, I, I haven't spent time with God today. And feeling close to him is such a practice and you have to work at it and you have to actively seek him and seek his, seek his character and read about him and talk to him and just know that even if you feel a little bit distant that he is always working in your life and if you feel like he's being silent on something it's because you're not ready to hear it yet if you feel like he is not giving you a direction to go it's probably because you're, you're where you're supposed to be right now so just be patient and be still in the waiting and that's hard a lot of times but until you feel a peace or a sense about something a sense of peace about something just just stay until he gives you that next step priscilla schreier in in discerning the voice of god Bible study, she talked a lot about GPS and how when you're going to a place, it gives you turn by turn direction, where if you saw all of the steps in one, you'd, you'd be so confused. And so it's like, God will give you one step at a time. He'll be the lamp unto your feet, under your feet, one step at a time. And that's all we need. That's all our, our earthly minds can handle. If he showed us our whole life lined out, everything that was going to happen to us, we would not be able to handle that. So he's He's graceful and he's merciful and he gives us what we just what we need just at the right time. So just be still and like I said, seek him, pray to him, talk to him, and hopefully you will feel closer to God in that way. How do you help your kids through grief? I lost my husband three months ago. Personally we say I'm so sorry for your loss and I want to acknowledge that and and 
and while every loss is different, you know, loss is loss, and, but I can't say that I know that pain because I haven't lost a husband. I know that loss hurts, and so I just want to acknowledge that and say that I'm so sorry. But for us, helping our children th through grief, and, and, and this is going to be a different, a different way than you will because this is going to be the loss of their dad, not the loss of their brother like we went through. But we put them in therapy. We put them in play therapy, and I feel like that was really, really helpful. We allow our children to talk about Riv and to and their papa and you know anyone else that they've lost and to remember them in a good, happy, healthy light. We let them cry. We they, we let them see us cry. We just welcome any emotion and we let them know that any emotion that they feel is okay, and that this is a hard life, but God is with us through it all, and He is He has created us to do the hard things and just model model for them the best you can showing your faith and being there being there for their little hearts and and as hard as it is to get out of bed when you're going through grief like that get up keep fighting because they're watching you and they're seeing you know their mama and they need their mama and get yourself some help too because I think helping yourself will will in turn help them and help you to be the best mom that you can be for them without their dad and without your husband I'm so sorry for your loss and I hope I hope that um, you can feel a little bit of peace throughout your day let's see what is your advice to people when they feel like they don't know what to say to the bereaved I still struggle with this now I, I I've talked about it before I when Granger's dad passed in 2014 I do not feel like I was there the way that I should have been there because I didn't know loss I didn't know Yes, I loved Chris and I, and I, Chris is his dad. I loved Chris and I, and I truly missed him, but I didn't know the love that they had for, for their dad and, and, and my, um, my mother-in-law for her husband. And I don't feel like I was there enough for her. And I don't feel like I was there enough for my mom when she lost her mom, because I hadn't went, I hadn't gone through loss yet. And even now, I still don't know what to say sometimes because there truly are no words that are going to make it better. So my advice is just to just to be there and just to sit in the suck and just to acknowledge their pain and acknowledge that this hurts and I'm so sorry and I am here when or if the time is right and and um, don't ask what you can do for them because a lot of times when they're when they're hurting they don't know what they want they don't know what they need they just need people to step up and do it you know like I, I had friends that that came to my house every day that brought food no matter what even if I said I, I didn't want it that took my kids no matter what, even if I said I didn't want it. And, you know, there are times, there are times for, for, for the words to say, but you don't always have to just, you don't always have to fill them with that right at the beginning. Their hearts may not be ready to hear, well, they're in a better place or God needed an angel or, or all that stuff. Their hearts might not be ready to hear that yet. So just acknowledge their, their hurt and their sadness and try to help their family any way that you can, whether that's making a funeral arrangement for them or, Mailing them a book with a, with a nice card that says, when you're ready, I feel like this may help you. And just, just being there in the hurt and in the pain with them, crying with them. And talk about their loved ones because I feel like I didn't talk about Chris or, or my nanny or, or anybody who's gone. I didn't feel like I talked about them enough because I didn't want to hurt. I didn't want to hurt Granger or Debbie or my mom by bringing up their, their loved one that was gone. So but we want to talk about our loved ones. Like I want people to ask about River. I want people to tell me stories about River. So gosh, I'm sorry, I have a lump. Talk about them. They, you're not going to make them any more sad. They're already sad. They're going to be sad forever. So they want to remember the good times and remember the joy. So that's my answer for that. <sighs> Let me collect myself. Let's see, I have a few more, but I'll maybe save these for next time and then we'll get into what I wanted to talk about today. How do I ask for forgiveness and know that I am forgiven? So there are times when I, I feel like I've asked for God's forgiveness for certain things in my life every night when I go to sleep. I like repeat it every night. And we don't, we don't have to do that. The Bible says that he blots out our transgressions and he remembers them no more. Not that he forgets them. It doesn't say that, it says he remembers them no more. When we ask for forgiveness and we truly have Christ in our heart and we truly believe that Jesus died for our sins and was risen from the dead and we have that relationship with Christ, and we're trying to be good people, we are forgiven. It doesn't matter if you ask it one time or a hundred times. You know, we, we are forgiven and God is so merciful and he, he wants to forgive us. All he wants is for us to seek him and ask for forgiveness and acknowledge our sin or things that we have done and 
Don't feel like you have to ask for forgiveness for the same sin over and over and over and over, even though sometimes I feel like I have to do that. He forgives us and he remembers our sin no more. And I just think that's so incredibly beautiful and undeserved. You know, his, Christ died. He took on all of that with his blood for us so that we wouldn't have to keep begging for forgiveness, you know, for the same sin over and over. So you are forgiven if you are going through something and you truly feel like you, you know God in your heart and you ask for forgiveness, you're forgiven. He's forgiven you. Please don't let the enemy fill your head and say, you know, you're never gonna be forgiven or this sin is too bad, that God will never forgive you because those are lies. So just know in your heart that you're forgiven and, and move on and keep trying to be a good person. This one says, hi from England. Please help me understand God's plan. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wish I could answer that for you, but I cannot. I don't understand God's plan. Nobody understands God's plan. That is the mystery of life. That is the mystery of life. Nobody understands what God is doing or why he is doing it. Only the master creator understands that. And the sooner that we realize that, that we do not have the control that we think think that we do, that that's all kind of a perception. We do have free will and we have choices and things, but we don't have as much control as we think we do. And the sooner we realize your will be done, not mine, the more peace we can have in our heart to go about our lives and to understand that we're not gonna understand and that's okay. We don't have to understand. You know, God's plan is to, is to save all of us and bring, bring people to heaven. And how he goes about that is his choice and he could do whatever he wants. So I'm sorry I can't answer that for you. I wish I could answer that for you. Just try to build a relationship with him and understand his character and know that he does have your best interest at heart, even sometimes when it hurts. And that we may not see it in this lifetime. We may not see his plan for our lives come to fruition in this lifetime but the glory that's to come is so much greater than anything in this life could ever bring. One more question and then I'll move on. Have you ever been to a medium or believe in what mediums can do? So back when I was like younger and you know, I didn't know Christ and I would go, I would go to little psychics at fairs and stuff for fun, for entertainment. Didn't, not truly knowing, you know, knowing that, kind of knowing that they weren't real, but also just, just going for entertainment. And, you know, the Bible says in Leviticus, do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists for you will be defiled by them. All I can say, I can tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, don't do it. And a lot of people sent me info for mediums after we lost River, you know, saying, do you want to talk to your baby? Do you want, and, and I just, no, <laughs> it, I will seek God over anyone else. Now, do I believe that people have certain can see certain things or visions or sense things before they happen and, and have that sense of ESP knowing something's going to happen or or if something comes to their mind they need to tell somebody else like well, I had this feeling about this I feel like you should know I feel like people people have that spiritual connection I do and I actually read a book by Lauren Lynn Jackson and that was the book about signs and she speaks she speaks a lot about how she's felt she felt this from being a little girl and she she didn't understand it she didn't want it it starts off with a story about her and her she was swimming and her mom said she was gonna go see her grandpa she didn't want to go but then all of a sudden she got this feeling in her heart which I have to say is probably from God got this feeling in her heart that she needed to go and so she begged her mom please I have to go I have to go I have to go see him and her mom was like no you can stay it's fine no 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 you can stay and she's like no I have to go see him she was really upset and she went and had her last visit before her granddad passed away. So I do feel like people can have visions like that. I think I've talked about this on my, on my Arise before that for some reason, all, you know, all through River's life, I worried about him. I always thought something was gonna happen. And my mom dreamed about drowning. And the day that it happened, uh, we were driving by the pond at the farm and I was always worried about the pond. And I, I don't know if I've talked about this before, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I was always worried about the pond at the farm because I, it's all it is is a dock and it's completely open. There's no gate or anything. And I always thought, I was always so worried about river there. And that day we were driving by and I was biting my nails and Granger was like, what are you thinking about? And I, I said, river drowning. And this was, y'all, this was six hours before it, before he drowned. And I don't know what that meant or why or why there was nothing that I could have done to stop it, why I would have been given that thought or that vision, but I got it and I had it. And of course I think back now to like, it's just a weird thing because I was never worried about our home pool. We had a gate, we had a lock. I was never concerned about that. I was worried about the pond and the fact that it happened six hours later at our home pool 
I'll just never understand. So I, I'm sorry, I'm going all around the world on this, on this question, but I do feel like people can get those things in those visions, but I feel like those are from God. So for someone to, I, my personal opinion is I would not seek out a medium because I would seek anything that I need or have questions about with God. I'll give you one more, one more scripture on that. It's from Deuteronomy 18, nine through 12. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. This is all your, your guys' own personal opinion, and I know when you lose someone, you crave to talk to them, and you crave to feel them or, or hear them, but it's just my personal opinion, not something that I would do. So, just laying that out there. <sighs> Let's get into what we're getting at. So I was thinking this a lot this week about how to spread the gospel and how to bring people to heaven and how to raise up our children so that we try to keep them on the right path. And I saw something the other day that said, if you're homeschooling or if you're doing distance learning, you can bring parents, you can bring the church and you can bring God back into your schools because the Bible is at your kitchen table. And I was just like, boom, yes, we're home. You know, a lot of times, if, unless you go to like a private Christian school, the teachings of God and Christianity are not welcome in the school, in the public schools. So if you're home and you are homeschooling and you are teaching at home, add that to your curriculum. Now's your time to, to fill your children with the love and the knowledge of God. And I think that's so important and something that I didn't have. Obviously I went to public school, so we weren't you know, allowed to learn about that kind of stuff. I'm gonna read from Deuteronomy 6, four through nine. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So we have a responsibility to our children to teach them what matters to God and what is important. And it's not shoving doctrine down their throat and shoving religion down their throat. It's just modeling, modeling our faith and teaching them what is important to God. And the basis of that is loving your God with all your heart and loving each other. And then you can add in, you know, anything else that you want to teach them from the Bible. But those are the main things, teaching, teaching your children what is, what is valuable and what is important in the eyes of God and teaching your kids that your God is with you no matter what, starting at, starting at a young age and living that and modeling that to where if you're going through a hard time, they see, they see your strong faith. They see your tears and they see your pain, but they see God pulling you through. And I'm trying to model that for our children and, and give them little doses of that throughout our day so that they see and they can learn to trust the Lord and, and keep growing up trusting the Lord. And, and yes, you know, there's, a, there's that verse in Proverbs where it's train your children up and um, for, for they will not depart or something. But that's not always the case. You know, you can, you can train your children the best, train your children the best that you can, but they're going to they're gonna sway or get lost and have their own opinions and, and start reading their own, what they want on their own. All we can do is do the best that we can to plant the seeds let them know that their God loves them and they are so important and they have purpose in this life. Let them know that life is hard, but God is, through, God is with us through it all. And then they're gonna be older and make their own decisions. But that verse also says some about training them in the way that they will go. And some people take that so literally, like if you teach them the Bible, they will not, they will not turn from it. But it can also mean train them up in the way that God wants them to go or that that their their own individual talents and gifts that God gave them train them up in that way support them in that way not just in life what truly makes them happy but what is pleasing to God and what their heart desires and just trying to set them off on that good foot of finding their gifts their individual gifts that God gave them and letting them go in that way and, and encouraging them in that way and still trying to obviously let them know how much God loves them and how much you love them and training them up in that way. You know, our kids, our kids are sponges and they, they will imitate us. You know, sometimes I'll see myself, I'll, London will slam a door and I'm like, oh, she got that for me. 
they are watching us. So if we live our lives grumbling and angry and complaining and gossiping and talking ugly about people, our children are going to do that too. You know, hate is not born into people. Hate is shown and hate is modeled. And so it's our duty, it is our duty as parents to train them up in the way that they should go. And when you start finding God and living in that peace and His love and His grace, all that negativity and all that junk goes away and you start to show the fruits of the Spirit. You know, love, peace, joy, gentleness, kindness, goodness, self-control. And then your children will, will start to, those will start to grow in their hearts as well. So. I was just thinking about raising raising all these little kids up in this time. You know, it's a crazy, crazy time in our lives, and we we so need the Lord, and we so need Jesus, and their little hearts need it so much and crave it so much, and we have an opportunity to build up kingdom people, kingdom kingdom sons and daughters, and and it's our duty as parents to do that. So if you are home and you are homeschooling, and even if you're not, add that in, <laughs> guide them in that way, talk to them about it, see see how they how they feel about it, read them books. Just try to plant those seeds in their hearts and hopefully they will not depart. Granger and I were talking the other day about kind of the simplicity of Christianity and how how it seems, you know, you look at the Bible and it seems like there's so many laws and so all this stuff that, you know, no one person could actually uphold. And we can't, you know, we're sinners, but it's so simple. It is so simple. It says over and over in the Bible, the main things that we have to do, love your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your strength and love each other. That's pretty much it. And you know, along the way, bring people to heaven, bring people to Jesus, spread the gospel, do good works. Those all add in there. Try, you know, try to turn away from sin. Yes, but the main gist is love your God with all your heart. Believe that Jesus died for you and was raised from the dead and love each other. You know, love, love, love each other. Don't spread negativity and hate and gossip and just love one another. It's really, really simple and it's it's almost it's hard to believe it's that simple in a way. Matthew 16, 24 to 26. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. And this is in Luke. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. This is a daily, a daily act of taking up our cross to follow Jesus. A lot of people think taking up your cross is, you know, taking up your burdens and, and everything that you have to deal with in this life. And it is in a way, but it's it's also, no, you know, putting on your armor of God and knowing in your mind and your heart to say no to the enemy and say no when we realize that we may be doing something sinful and, and feel it, we might feel convicted about something. And to practice every day to take up our cross, choose to follow the Lord, even if that means losing friends along the way, losing family along the way. Obviously, we don't want that to happen, but you need to be choosing God above all else. And sometimes that's hard to do because our worldview is so skewed and we are so focused on this world and not focused on the glory to come. But it's, it's basically taking up your cross, dying to yourself, and living for God's will and not your own. And if we can do that, you have so much more peace in your heart because you realize God's got this. God's got you, he's got your family, and whatever happens in this life, if it's bad, good, and different, it is in God's plan for your life. And when you learn to trust that, you, you just receive so much peace in your heart from the Lord. And I always say all the time, it's not easy. It's not easy, it's hard, especially when you're going through something hard. But it's just daily making that choice to take up your cross, more of you, Jesus, less of me, and walking that road and walking that race and, and doing the best that you can on your walk towards heaven. I think that's all I have for you guys today. Take up your cross today. Choose to follow the Lord. Choose to plant those seeds in your children's hearts. Choose to take the next step, take the next breath, and know that God has a plan for your life and know that you are so chosen and so loved and pray for eyes to see more of heaven, more of Jesus and less of this world. I was watching a sermon the other day and, and Catherine Wolf, who she's amazing. If you guys haven't heard of her, look her up. She has a couple of books out, Suffer Strong and Hope Heals. And I've read both of those. She said, the question to ask yourself is, do you believe in the dark? When you're going through dark times and trials and tribulations, do you believe in the dark, what you know to be true in the light? It's so much easier to follow Jesus and follow God when your life is great. But 
do you truly still believe all those things in the dark when it's hard? Ask yourself that today. So this shirt, a lot of you guys asked where I get my shirts from. This is from Chosen Girl Movement. I will link it below. They're having a sale this weekend, 20% off. And I just love their shirts. I always say you are chosen. So if you wanna get this, this is their cute little tie-dye shirt. I'm not getting paid or anything for saying that. I just, I think Chosen Girl Movement is such a, is such a strong platform for Jesus. And they are trying to bring people to heaven just like I am. So if you guys wanna check that out, I will link it down below. Hope you guys have a great week. Thank you again so much for watching. God loves you. You're so chosen.